Well, good morning. Here we are. A two-minute transition from YouTube into Facebook. So welcome aboard. And uh, if you want to see a really beautiful base created that Josh just finished up a few moments ago, check out our YouTube channel. Let's do that later. Stick with us for now. Good morning. I'm Bruce. I'll be doing the narration and camera work for you. And welcome aboard, everybody. So the idea today is making some sea creatures. We're uh, at the beach, if you will. So we're going to have, uh, well, good morning, Barbara Belzer. Hey, Lynn, welcome. Yep, and Joanna, thank you. Good afternoon to those of you in the UK. So today we're going to start out with a starfish, and then we're going to have a jellyfish, an octopus, a fishnet rondelle, and then a fish. So these are all things you would find at the shore. So, should be a lot of fun today. Uh, we'll give you a little preview here of some of the pieces. So the starfish are down here. Here's a beautiful little starfish right here. Good morning, David Hogan. Here's another one right there. And in fact, this one right here is going to be the giveaway piece for next week. So those of you that comment today, will be in the drawing for this uh, starfish that Josh made the other day. Good morning, Anita. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And uh, this little gold vase back here, if Bridget Blakemore made the transition from YouTube with us, she's the winner. So congratulations, Bridget. And uh, the gold vase will be on its way to you. So uh, our starfish will be the first pieces made today. And then after that, we're going to have some jellyfish. Uh, Bridget, I see the hello. Don't know if you heard the announcement, but you won the little gold vase from last week. Okay. Uh, our, um, here we go. There's our jellyfish. They don't sting. They are beautiful. And uh, one could be yours if you like. They're all for sale. Okay. So uh, there's the jellyfish. Next to it we have the octopus, but he seems to be shy, so I'll just turn him around a little bit. And there's our octopus. And again, if you're interested in any of these pieces, but perhaps you'd like a different color, then get in contact with us and you can place an order at artofire.com or call us, not right now during the broadcast, but at 301-253-6642. Or uh, you can uh, direct message Theta, and we can give you all kinds of information on how you can make these pieces yours, okay? So there's the starfish on the table here. We've got the jellyfish. We've got an octopus. We don't have a fishnet rondelle up here yet, but uh, we've got, uh, oh, I think Josh is going to go retrieve one to show us, okay? And the fish. Not sure exactly what colors or styles we're going to have today, but we've got a lot of fish. So we make a lot of these things and uh, we really enjoy them. And uh, these vases and bowls right here with the bubbles in them. A few weeks ago we did a bubble session and you saw us use some baking soda. If there's time at the end of the day, we might uh, just be able to squeeze another one of those in. But we'll see how the day goes, okay? So Josh has brought us a vase that has the fishnet pattern. So if you can imagine that spun out into a disc, that's what a fishnet disc would look like, okay? A fishnet rondelle. So we're going to be starting with the starfish. So let's go on back and uh, get started with Josh here. All righty. Morning. Morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Getting ready for summer, right? We've had some really nice warm days, so we figured why not? Let's do some nice beach theme. Yeah. Are you gonna make us a six pack? Yeah. Okay. Alright, Josh is gonna take a couple of gathers here and then he's gonna go, I believe on this one, he'll go get some gold frit. We'll give it a white background. A white background and then the gold frit. Okay, all righty. We're glad to have you all with us this morning. If you've got any questions about the process, 
or uh, want to make any comments, let them fly. Uh, especially if you've got questions, it's a lot of fun to discuss what we do. We like to share it with everybody. And speaking of sharing, if you'll remember to share, please, uh, that helps us with our viewership. If you comment, you get entered in the drawing, and next week's drawing is going to be fun. That's going to be uh, the large starfish you saw on the table over there. And again, congratulations to Bridget Blakemore, who won the gold vase that was the prize from last week. So if you're just joining us now, our, uh, our theme, if you will, is uh, things you would see at the beach. So the Art of Fire is at the beach today. And it, it just makes me think, if everybody had an ocean across the USA, then everybody would be surfing like California. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is that? That's uh, six minutes. <laughs> They'd all be wearing their baggies and Marshall sand sandals too. I think we're going to have to pass on the bushy, bushy blonde hair, dude. Six minutes. Oh, come on. Somebody's got to have picked that up. We got no re Yeah, Bridget Blakemore came through with Surfing USA. <laughs> okay, yep, yeah, we got some Beach Boys fans out there. All righty, so Josh is getting the... Uh, the shape of this going. He's got his frit on there. So there's your kind of brownish color. Barbara Belzer says she was busy singing the song. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is right now making a starfish. Wasn't that uh, was that Jefferson starfish? Jefferson starfish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a reach. Okay, so now by using the tweezers, the blades of the tweezers, he's able to kind of look and calibrate where he wants the five uh, spindles or legs. I guess they're legs. Don't know that much about starfish anatomy. Don't know much about history. Don't know much about the French I took. Oh, Man, you're on <laughs> I'm on a roll today. <laughs> we are going to name this one Jefferson Starfish. Okay, so now he's getting these grooves placed on the glass, and this is what's going to give him the uh, separation points, okay, between each of the legs. And then what he'll work toward is grabbing them about midpoint and pull them out. Okay. Once he gets those part, once he gets those pieces uh, grooved in there, then he'll begin the pooling process. So he's got the white base with the gold fret over top, and now just a little bit of pinching, a little refinement. No, David, no submarine races, but it is a cloudy day here. I, th I think if it wasn't such a cloudy day, I'd be sitting in the morning sun, sitting when the evening comes, <laughs> watching the ships roll in. Watch it go away again. A five-point bowl would do that, but it wouldn't be as much fun. Yeah. And I don't think we have a five-point bowl. Actually, I think Actually, we, we do, do, but it's, it's a six. We have a six-point star. Six, yeah. And and I don't know. I've I've seen starfish at the beach that have been in an accident and only have four legs, but I've never seen one with six. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. <laughs> no, we were actually looking, looking them up, and there was ones that actually had like 12. Whoa, really? Amazing. But we're not doing it for them. Okay. You, how about 10? You want to divide each of those in half? That would actually be a lot harder. 12 would be easier. 
Okay, so now you can see him pinching and pulling up just a little bit on each one. So one of the tricks with pulling the glass is don't try to do too much at one time. When the glass is hot, then it would pull out too thin in a string. Notice how he waited, he's going back around, and now he's using his diamond shears. They're called diamond shears because of the shape of the cutting tool right there in the middle. Takes the diamond, and now he's managing to bring that out some. So, the reason for using the tweezers as he is now, when he pulls out on that, each of the legs pulls a little closer together, and the groove he created is lost a little bit. It kind of pulls up also. Exactly, David. David's, David's got the acronym of the year. HGMCGD. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to say it. It is pretty, Catherine. We're really enjoying these. Oh, hot glass. Hot glass moves, okay. cold glass don't. Now, notice that he's still just pulling a short distance with this. He's not, he could pull a lot further if he wanted to, but what he'd like to do is get these narrower tips of that to cool off a little bit so that he's basically pulling from the well of hot glass that is the thicker portion. And now he's got a really nice taper to those, shaped well, to start uh, knocking off or, yep, there he goes, see just a little tap and he can knock them off, those little buttons that he pulled against. So if you got any questions, fire away, glad to have you with us. bit hot now. He's going to do a little more pulling, but it's just going to be real gentle. And you'll notice if we look from the side that this thing is twisting around all the time. It doesn't stay in one place. All the glass is moving. Now by pushing the glass back upward like that, it can create a nice little curve. Right now, he's beginning to cut the jack line or the neck line. Have we done a C anemone? No, we haven't. But we could try one. Yeah. Not today necessarily, but we'll no, uh, we'll well, get one. Good morning, Sharon. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you guys with us, all of us. Hey, while we're uh, watching Josh make this, why don't all of you tell us what's your favorite beach to visit? Hit that comment, get yourself entered into drawings, and tell us what's your favorite beach to visit. Laura says she loves the starfish. Thank you, Laura. We appreciate that. Right. Josh has to keep that iron turning constantly just to keep control of it so that it doesn't get away from him. And yeah. Chincoteague, Assateague. Anita Bloom's parents are retired there. It's a beautiful place. All right, so now Josh is going to be putting on some white dots onto the starfish. So he's going to heat up that little stick of white with the map gas. It's, it's a, like a, a propane torch, a little one. And he's going to use that to put dots onto the legs. We'll turn it so like the one I'm doing is 
Okay. Wow, Barbara's been all over the place. Chile, Stringer Beach, okay. David Hogan, Florida Gulf Coast. Okay, yes, they are beautiful. You can see that Josh is heating up the end of that white, and he's just asking for Todd to turn it some so that he can get to the next spot. Maybe we could do a seahorse with no name. Barbell also loves Cocoa Beach. I like Cocoa Beach. That's a, that's a pretty cool one, too. So after he does a little bit of that with the white, he gets it on a few of those legs, we'll probably have Todd take a flash, and then we'll do some more. Yep, we uh, didn't get a seahorse in the lineup today, but uh, now that we've heard uh, the seahorse and the anemone, Maybe we'll take another trip to the beach. Okay, so he's got his white dots on there. Todd takes it off for another flash. This will just drive heat into it so that the entire thing stays above 1,000 degrees. Otherwise, it could crack. So... and get in there and work this. We'll take a view from the other side. Joanna says you don't have nice beaches. Zona Romantica Porta Vallarta. Very nice, Lynn. Very nice. Okay, so you can see how when he gets ready to take the white away, he gives it just a little bit of a twirl and that burns it off. Gets those on. Now you can see some black spots on there where the torch burned it a little bit, but those will all disappear. All right, Todd will get it flashed and heated up again. Josh will take it back to finish him up. So we got another beautiful seahorse. Yes, Anita, it is cool. We really like these. We're having fun today. So let's get a good view of all those. And you can see how those little black spots from the burns came off. Okay. And there is our starfish. Spiny little devil. Cut it a little bit, tap the pipe, off it comes, into Todd's gloved hand, and away into the annealer we go. Well, let's hear it for Josh. Great job, Josh. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so Josh is, uh, somebody had a question, and Josh is a full-time glass blower. He's been here at the studio 18 years, 18 years, and uh, very lucky to have him here. Uh, does a lot of glass blowing, day in, day out. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, Harry Belafonte would say, all day, all <laughs> night. <laughs> was that okay. a question? What was the question? The, the question was if you were a full-time glass blower. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Todd, back over here, also a full-time glass blower. And Foster, who is down there at the sink in the distance, also a full-time glass blower. There he is, waving. Okay. And I'm Bruce, and I am not a full-time glass blower. <laughs> but sometimes it seems that way. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is really pretty much what uh, Josh just made right here. And for those of you that have been commenting, the starfish here is the giveaway for next week. And so be sure to comment. Your comments will get you entered in a random drawing to see who wins the starfish. The random drawing for last week was for this beautiful gold vase. 
and that's going to Bridget Blakemore. So I saw a comment earlier where she's already getting in touch with Theta, and we'll have it for you there. Okay, so uh, jellyfish are next, and here are the jellyfish. They come in a variety of colors, as can anything. If you decide you want a starfish or a jellyfish or an octopus, uh, just let us know if you don't like the colors you see here or perhaps in the catalog Tell us what you want and we can arrange it. In fact, we've even had folks that have ordered pieces and We've made them while they watched we've incorporated them into our live stream presentation So we could do that for you, too Also, we've got gift certificates available back here and We do them online, too. You don't just have to take the one that's on the blackboard there we can, uh, we can do one by email, and you can have it and let someone else that you want to give the gift of glass pick it out themselves, okay? So the jellyfish will be coming up next, and then, I'm sorry, yes, the jellyfish are next, and then it'll be on to the octopus. No peanut butter fish. No, I'm afraid not. Okay. So, Josh is uh, picking up his colors. So, we're going to uh, we're going to have a pink jellyfish? I think so. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, guys. Fine. Yeah. Welcome aboard, everybody. So somebody's made the joke about the peanut butter and because of the jellyfish. And you know how on Facebook there's all those idiotic uh, quizzes that go around all the time. Ask for your response. And uh, I was really got a kick out of one the other day. My son answered. And it was, name something that goes with peanut butter and not, and it can't be jelly. And Ken came right back with a spoon. And I said, my boy is a chip off the old block. Okay. So Josh is getting set up with his uh, optic or dip mold here. It's a 12 point mold he's going to use. He's gonna take another gather here in just a moment. I agree with you, Joanna. I, I really despise most of those uh, quizzes, surveys, or uh, things, and I don't usually participate in them. I saw one the other day that said your uh, gangster name is your favorite color and the last item of clothing you put on or something like that. And so, I just think it's really kind of stupid. Hello, Kimberly. Welcome aboard. And Renee, yeah. All right, so Josh now has picked up the frit. And right now, he's going to roll the shape out on this. He's establishing the bubble. We can see it grow out into the glass. And he's going to marver and taper the cylinder a little bit. So the jellyfish is a bit of a long form here, so he's not going to go with this uh, full standard cylinder there. What do you think, Bruce? Is it going to fit? Oh, yeah, you're going to make it. Yeah, you're going to make it. So he's got to get that slug of glass into this cylinder. But by getting it hot enough, it will actually kind of just drip right in and then he could push it the rest of the way. He blows real hard, and this creates ridges in the glass. He's blown the bubble down in there, and what he'll do now is just start on inflating it, inflating it, and then pulling it out some. So the top of this jellyfish will be up toward the blowpipe. He's using his diamond shears to pull the glass a little bit. Straighten it out some. Ah, Ted Scott has a really good take on those Facebook quizzes. He says, many of them are social engineering to guess your secret questions. And then they can hack your account. 
I've always been a little bit suspicious, but I never heard it expressed that way. So Josh has got the bubble in there. He's got that little knob of glass on the end of the piece. He'll start using the uh, diamond shears to pull it out. And so we talked about tools once before. A couple people had asked questions about the jacks. And sometimes we get questions about why do we call them diamond shears? Well, you see that shape in the middle? It's kind of a diamond shape, and when you cut the glass with this, it squeezes it right down. There'll be a little scar in the middle, but it brings it in from all sides. If you were to cut it with straight shears, it would make more of a straight line across the glass. Josh cut another line in the jellyfish. Yes, they are mesmerizing to watch, Lynn, but I like to watch them from a distance because having been stung when we used to go to Chesapeake Beach, and the Chesapeake Bay is loaded with them, especially yeah, in at, August. Uh, Calvert Cliffs. Calvert Cliffs, yeah. And my daughter and I were stung twice. Ah. That can ruin a good day. I'll tell you what, though, she handled it better than I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now you can see that he's pulling this out some. Not going to worry about how the top remains shaped at the moment. He's pushing back with the jacks. See how that uh, dome at the top was getting smaller, and now it pulls out. So every time it pulls out like that, he'll do a little work on pushing it back. So this will be the central portion of the tendrils, and then they'll be adding clear glass for the rest of it. Yeah, Josh says his daughter handled it better than he did. And uh, I can remember having trouble with jellyfish. So he's cutting a little constriction there, but he's also pushed back a little bit. As he pulls out, it pulls the glass away from that dome. The diamond shears cool it a little bit. And now it's going to be a series of tendrils put on here. So Todd will be taking gathers, and uh, he'll bring them over, and Josh will take it with the diamond shears, lay it on, string it down the central core there, and cut it off. So here he goes, he places it, drapes it around in a random pattern, and cuts it free. Yeah, that's great. He pushed that up a little bit there just to make sure he had nice solid contact and he keeps it nicely in line. Okay. So they'll do about, oh, probably six to eight of these. You can see that the glass is still moving. If Josh stops, it falls toward the floor. Now he'll flip it over. Attach the next bit of clear glass, drape it down, and cut it off. And the whole time, it was falling toward the floor. So that's something that the glass artist has to constantly compensate for. You've got to pay attention to what the glass is doing. If it's hot enough not to crack, it's probably going to be in motion. He's still turning the pipe. He'll stop for a moment. He'll flip it. And then as it falls, he drapes the line down and cuts it free. So he's anticipating that fall due to heat and gravity, using it to his advantage. So what we will typically... It's uh, going to be uh, cranberry pink, Cindy. It's a uh, cranberry pink core. And hey, we got another HGM CGD from Kimberly Stern. I tell you what, we got something going here, David Hogan. My slogan with David Hogan. All right. In motion, like the ocean, yes. And he cuts it again. And back for another flash heat. Good morning, Rude. Uh, Right now we're working on a jellyfish. Our theme is uh, 
things you might see at the beach or on vacation, or as a lot of our friends in the UK and probably parts of Europe would say on holiday. So uh, we have uh, Memorial Day coming up here soon. It's typically the beginning of the beach season, if you will. So uh, we've already made a starfish. Now we're working on a jellyfish. It's a cranberry pink core. This is clear glass that's being brought on for all the tendrils. And you can see how that's going. Well, hello, Marianne, and welcome from Rockville. So now I just gotta push that body back into it. Now you can, yeah, like Josh just said, watch what happens here on that slope. See how he's pushing back with his tweezers and the slope on the top of the jellyfish. You keep pushing that back in, straightening, straightening the line there. You will just keep pushing that. Until he gets that perfect jellyfish look. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful look to it. Okay, gorgeous, a truly gorgeous jellyfish. So he's into the glory hole. Yeah, it is beautiful, Barbara. We uh, we really like it. And uh, we're just taking a couple of little reheats here. In his brand new glory hole. We built one uh, the other day. In case you haven't watched before, this is one of the glory holes. And you can see where somebody's broken a lot of blue glass down in the bottom of it. So uh, Josh's was in a little bit rougher shape because it gets used a lot. And we put a brand new burner tip. There's the burner tip up there. That's where the flame comes from. Okay. And so this is uh, one of the glory holes and we just got his lit yesterday afternoon. So we put that all together, and uh, he's, he's still working on straightening things out. And in just a second, he's going to drop it off into that little cradle and put a hook on it. So it will hang from your window, be beautiful in your house. Okay, so a little tap of the pipe, it comes free. And now he'll gather up a small amount of clear glass on the iron and put the hook on this. So there's lots of ways to do jellyfish. You may have seen uh, others done by other glass blowing studios, but this is the way we do with jellyfish here at the Art of Fire. So we'll pull up on that uh, slab of glass there, curl it over, and have a nice strong hook, and it could be hung in your house too. So I don't believe this one's spoken for, so if you'd like a cranberry pink jellyfish, let us know. And we'll go on over here and take a close look at the ones that uh, are on display. And then we'll be getting ready to go on to our next piece of glass. So here are other jellyfish. And uh, in fact, this one right here is pink. That's the same thing as Josh just made. So uh, how about some thumbs up and some uh, good words for Josh. That was a really great job he did. Okay. So... Uh, and this man, and here we are. Good morning, Foster. Hi, how are we today? Good. Hope everybody's enjoying the uh, At the Beach episode. Here we go. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, although it's a little bit on the chilly side today, but it'll get there. We look forward <laughs> to seeing you at the beach. Okay. All righty. So uh, we've seen the starfish, just like that, exactly like that would in fact. This starfish is our giveaway piece this week, so uh, be sure to make comments. That's what will get you entered in the drawing. And Bridget Blakemore was the winner of the gold vase, so uh, there you have it. All right, and the next piece is going to be the octopus, okay? So there's a sample of one right there. 
We'll find out in a minute what uh, colors Josh is going to be using on this. And then after that, Foster, uh, Cindy says hi, Joanna says hi, hi everybody there. says hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah, yeah we'll okay. We'll see you at the beach. Uh -huh. <laughs> All righty. After a little bit, we'll be doing a fishnet rondelle. So the rondelle is like a spun out plate, but there's a fishnet pattern if you want to get an idea. I don't know what colors Todd will be using, but that'll be the fishnet pattern. And then we'll finish up with some yeah. actual fish. Well, some glass fish. We can't eat those. Okay. All right. Let's head on back here and see if we can't find out what colors Josh is going to be using. Joy McGuigan says hi, Foster. Everybody says hi. She, actually, she says howdy, Foster. I wonder if she's part of the Texas contingent. Okay. Ah. Well, here we have the eyes for the octopus. You want to show us the uh, cane stick that that comes from? Okay. So, what have you got there? Black surrounded by yellow? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, it's like pulling a piece of cane, and you can see where some of it sheared off on the side here. So, there's a solid black core running down the center of it, and over that is gathered up yellow glass, okay? And then, when you nip off these small pieces like this, you can use them as the eye to place onto the Maryland girl with a howdy. Okay. So anyway, there's uh, there's there's the eye. So we can put those on lots of things. We got them for dragons. We got them for octopi. We got them for fish. We can put them. Yeah, David, garden not included with the octopus. <laughs> what color are you going to use for this, Josh? So, it's going to be actually green. Oh, okay. Why? Because I thought it would be cool to make a green octopus. Okay. Hello, Tom Dunn. Welcome. Welcome. Good afternoon. Oh, we got all kinds of musical references today. We got the Beatles, we got Otis Redding, we got the Beach Boys. Yeah. Okay, so he'll be going with the octopus, and you can see that there's going to be a lot of irons up there, so there's going to be a lot of work with the uh, bits. Sometimes people call these smaller irons bit irons because, no, we don't bite them. They're for delivering a bit of glass. Quite often a glass blower will say, uh, get me a small bit, or get me a larger bit. But uh, the bits are what we pick up with those irons. Ah, we got a suggestion for a mermaid. Jana Selders, welcome aboard, never late, always on time. We're going for an octopus. Okay. No, I haven't gone under the boardwalk yet, David. I was saving that, but uh, anyway. Uh, so we've got suggestions for an anemone, a seahorse, and now, uh, what was that last one? Uh, mermaid. Mermaid, okay. We're going to have to put these on the list. We'll have to visit the beach another day. We have not done a mermaid, but we could probably figure it out. It may be a few weeks before you see that and the other stuff. The seahorse is doable. Anemone's probably not too bad. Seahorse, not too bad. It's actually kind of like our dragon. Yeah. Uh, the first color was green. He put uh, green on there first. No, I'm sorry, he's got white on there. Now he's picking up the green. My bad. So the green is overlying the opaque white, and that'll help the color pop a little more. Yeah, Sharon, the more we talk about it, the more I'm thinking we definitely need a mermaid. Got any questions? Fire away. We'll be glad to answer them. Glad to have you with us today. Please be sure to share, like, and comment. When you share, uh, you probably have more friends than we do, and that gets our viewership enlarged, and we like that. We'd like to pick up a lot more people. We enjoy doing this, and we like to spread the word. The comments will help you to get entered in a drawing 
so that you might win a piece. Ethel Mermaid, yes, uh-huh. Oh yeah, I think I think if we do another at the beach episode, we will have to call it the Poseidon Adventure. Rock Lobster, oh yes, here we go. Hey, we're getting into it today. Good afternoon, Steve Ellis. Your fiance is also on board here. Or did you forget about last week's matchmakers? I'm teasing. Okay, so. Josh Dow is getting blocked onto the glass there. That's green covering a white. Oh yeah, he remembers. He says, hi you Bridget. <laughs> okay, so that blocking helped cool the surface of the glass. So when uh, Josh goes in to gather again, it doesn't cause the bubble in the interior to collapse. If he were to gather that 2000 degree glass on top of a hot bubble, it would just cause it to shrink up and likely disappear. But he'll come back with a clear coating over top of that green and it will begin to shape this for the body. Oh yeah, Maryland Blue Crab too. We got, we got to start writing these down. I don't want to have to play back the video to find out all the suggestions. I actually made a lobster one time for my granddaughter. She. Uh, she had a stuffed animal that uh, she carried around. I don't know, Amelia may still have that lobster, and she's 17 now. But from the time she was about, oh, three or four, she had a, a stuffed lobster that was bigger than her. So one time I made a little glass lobster for her. No Gilligan's Island reference. This is a two-hour tour. Again, using the newspaper to shape the glass, and now a constriction with the jack lines, because eventually we're going to have to take this off the blowpipe, okay? Oh no, Ted, none of us here will forget the tortoise. Okay. We'll get that hot. Notice as he angles that down while he blows it, the glass elongates a little bit, but still got the nice taper at the top and blown out. Uh, Kimberly Stern suggests that one would hope for no shipwrecks today. Maybe we could do the Edmund Fitzgerald. A, Joy has an alligator, alligator gar here at home. We'd love to see one of those. Joanna, Joanna suggests a catfish. There we go. How about fins on a memorial cat? I'm not getting much feedback from the guys. <laughs> I, I, I can tell that this, this is not going real well. In fact, Todd has earplugs in so he doesn't have to listen to it. All right, here we go with the eyes. The eyes have it. All right, he's going to preheat the eye a little bit. Notice okay. the pods letting it fall. They flip it, and now Josh places the eye on the glass, and the torch will heat it just enough to adhere. A shark for Shark Week? I think we're just going to have to replay the comments to find an entire list of things to do. But it sounds like fun. Oh, we could put a cat face on a fish. Yep. Yes, it was priceless, Lynn.
Okay. Rainbow trout. Yeah, that's a great idea. I have some uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet cane. SpongeBob and a pineapple. I like it. Hey, Todd. Joy says that the look you gave me was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> I have RGBF, Preston Glassblower face. Ah! Alright, so now he's making sure that the eyes are here. Notice that he has to keep turning the glass because gravity's going to have it fall away toward the floor. A little more air in it. Okay, time. Okay, there we go. So now it's time to punty this portion up. So the punty is going to go up toward the top of the octopus's head. Yeah, uh, it is a little funny with the signal today. We're in an area where sometimes the uh, coverage is not quite what we want, the uh, signal. Uh, but for the most part, it will come back. So bear with us if you lose signal for a moment. Please hang around. We'll be right back usually. Okay, here we come with the putty, a nice gentle attachment right to the top of the head. Letting everything stabilize, and once again, it'll be just a drop of water, the tap of the pipe, and it'll come off. And it'll be time. We'll put the tentacles on it. Little drop of water, and off it comes. Okay, so now Todd is going to start gathering up glass, rolling through the color. Bridget reports a two to six, six second lag between audio and visual, but it's been like that for weeks. Now, if the lag is audio after visual, it might be because they want to censor me. I don't count. I don't imagine that's true. Okay, so Todd now has picked up some white, covering it with green so that this will match. Josh has the heat concentrated in the lower portion. He's going to open up the bottom of that just somewhat so they can start adding the tentacles. Okay. So he's got the uh, Mostly green on one side, the white underneath, and then he'll be putting these on yeah, one at a time. The guys are discussing now the exact placement of these. Okay, it's important to, to communicate, you know, where the glass is going, who's going to place it where. Here comes Todd, he'll point the glass downward. Josh will place it as he wants and draw it out and then clip it off. Now, that thing is going to be constantly moving. So he's pulling it some and cutting it a little bit. Notice when he points the iron downward, the glass falls away. If he points at approximately a 45 degree angle, he doesn't have as much... Uh, no problem in the Netherlands. That's good to hear, Ruth. So by turning your glass away, now he can curl it up, and this is going to give him room for the next one. So pay, pay attention on this next one when they attach it. It's going to start to see how this dance really works with the glass. The way that Josh is turning the iron, changing the position of the glass, he's got to constantly keep his eye on any tentacles that are already in place, but he's 
actively working with the hottest one. So what he's going to do is get this one in position and he'll adjust his heat so that this is not too hot. It's kind of the Goldilocks crab. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. So he's going to look for that just right temperature where the tentacle or plural, once he gets to that point, stay in place and don't move excessively, but he doesn't let the glass crack. So by the time he gets through, are you doing a full eight? Okay. I figured he had to. By the time he gets to the eighth one, you'll be quite experienced watching and picking up the tricks of how he does this. So now watch the glass, it's sagging downward. Now he'll flip it to receive the next bit. Then he'll draw that out. And after he clips it, he'll elongate it, but he's gonna start moving the pipe in a minute. He's waiting on the glass to cool a little bit. He's held it in position. doesn't want that one to fall into the first one. So by putting a reversed curl to it, you can kind of keep things away from one another. Yes, Root, it is, it is difficult. By the time we get around to the last one, it's going to be a little bit tricky. The use of the torch right now is to heat the putty. We need the putty to stay warm and not crack. If it starts cracking from the cold, we've got a floor model. So by heating the punty only right now, when Josh goes back in for a reheat, everything in the glory hole gets hot, including the putty, but the putty's been preheated. So it's going to pick up a little extra heat, and now he doesn't have to overheat the existing tentacles. He's got those things placed just like he wants. He's going to heat the putty some. Notice he can use the back of the torch to kind of shape the glass and pull it away a little bit. So in any case, it's still hot. It's just not so hot that it's dripping all around. He's got the putty heated. Todd's called that he's ready. Josh will pick his new location. And notice as Todd presents the glass, the white is toward the bottom. So the underneath portion of the tentacle is the white that shows there. As he turns it up like that, notice it wants to fall away toward the floor. When he points it downward, it straightens out. So now another gentle curve. And it's time to reheat. So this is really tricky here. And he's only got three on there. So by the time he gets another five, you can imagine that there's going to be a lot of conflict amongst the tentacles. If he gets just enough heat, he can manipulate it as he wants. The last one he put on is the hottest right now, but it's got kind of curled away, so notice he can use the torch as a tool actually, like a hand tool, you can move the tentacle a little bit. So now he's got three. My guess is he'll go for the open spot on the opposite side, have four equally placed, and then go in between them, which is when it'll get interesting. And uh, we'll take a little bit closer look at the glass that Todd's presenting. And since there are eight of these, we'll go watch him gather up one here in a moment. Yeah. Yeah. So he's ready. He's got the tentacle placed. Here we go. In the remaining big open spot, the place, and a pull, and a gentle tug, and a stick. Notice how fast that moves. Take his tweezers and begin to curl it. Curl it back onto itself and 
get it nicely out of the way. All right, another great one. All right, let's go on over here. We'll see a little bit about how this frit is picked up to get the white on one side and the green on the other. So first time we'll coat the whole thing in white. Yes, Rude, it is going to get difficult soon. It'll be tricky. And we'll get back over there for it, but I thought you might like to see how this color pattern is put on here so we get the white on one side and the green on the other. All right, so now instead of turning the whole thing, Todd is just rocking back and forth a little and getting the green on the one side. Now a little bit of marbling returns it to more of a cylindrical shape and then he'll start heating things up for the delivery. So now we've got four on there. It's start, time to start filling in the gap. Joy's uh, suggesting you could stop at four and call it a quadrupus. But Josh is up to the challenge. So the next one is going to go between a couple of these. So with the white facing toward Todd, more downward. Josh draws it out gently now. Here's the interesting part. He pulls and he cuts, and by rotating the pipe, he keeps it away from the adjacent two. If it falls a little fast, he compensates by turning it over. Good morning, Sharon. Welcome aboard. As you could probably guess, we've got an octopus in the process. Josh is giving it a nice, gentle curl and shape and reheating the punky again. So for each of these he does from here on out, filling in these gaps, he's going to be pretty quick with the hands and especially as far as inclining the iron toward the floor. When he holds it horizontal like this across both bench rails, if the tentacles start to fall, they'll fall toward the floor and wind up at a 90 degree angle to the peak. For one, that might not be too bad, but for one amongst eight, it could be a mess. So by inclining the iron, he controls the fall. He goes back in for the heat, and now what he'll do is take a look at all of these just to make sure that he's got the alignment like he wants. If he needs to adjust, for instance, the tip on that one, he just heats that up a little bit, and now he'll go back and reheat the whole thing. So this is the octopus. Earlier we did a, uh, a starfish, and we also did a jellyfish. So they're talking back and forth, communicating what needs to be done. So Josh now is probably going to go toward that preheated piece. There it is. That's the one he heated. And with his straight shears, he pulls it up a little bit and then he snips it off. And notice how that gave him kind of a pointed cut as opposed to the diamond shears. He's called for Todd, who will now deliver the iron. We'll go in between another pair. Flip it off. And immediately the glass is falling. And it wants to fall toward the other pieces. By that nice slow rotation, he keeps it centered, gets it balanced. Now it's just a matter of curl it back up, give it a slightly different look than this neighbor, and off he goes. So you can well imagine, by the time we get to the eighth one, it's going to be a real dance at the bench, just to keep everything straight. But you'll also notice that in planning the arrangement of these, he's let them spread fairly wide apart. They don't uh, come back toward each other. He gave himself plenty of room to work with. He's going to preheat that honey now, and then will be coming back for some more heat in a moment. Yes, Barbara, he does have mad skills. Ah, oh, Cheryl, welcome aboard. Well, you're watching the process of making an octopus. So 
a green octopus with a uh, white core and we're in the process right now of adding the eight tentacles and the tentacles have a green surface toward the top white underneath so we're just discussing with everybody how to watch what it is Josh is doing with the glass as he makes these adjustments yeah. Yeah. so he's got six on there you can see the open spots here comes number seven place it and he'll pull it upward gently and then slip it off and watch it fall when he cuts it free and he immediately angles it by pipe downward Let's not fall, it takes its time. It's still moving. See how fluid that is right now. By curling it back, there we go. All right. Thank you, Sharon. We appreciate the sharing. We appreciate Sharon's sharing. Okay. Now he's going to do any final adjustments. Todd's in the last part of the process. Notice that glass is still hot enough that he can manipulate it. It's flowing. Thank you, Marianne. Glad you're enjoying it. Glad all of you are enjoying it. will have to answer that question. But she's online with us and she can let you know. Okay, so he's working on getting the heat in it. Just enough so it doesn't crack. Enough that if he wants any of the tentacles to move, they're soft enough to move without falling into each other. That's the key. So we're ready on the last one. Todd's bringing it. He'll bring the empty spot up to the top in a moment. There we go. Okay, so you caught that correction there, okay. Todd had presented it with the white side up, but that really doesn't matter. Josh just told him, watch that glass fall right there in the middle. He's rocking it back and forth a little bit. Then if he wants to, he can flip it up to where it's on top. And a final I need to straighten put a little curl on that first one. Okay. Okay, so he's going to heat up the honey again. So I hope you enjoyed watching that part of it and we can concentrate on seeing how he manipulated the position of the iron, whether he pointed it downward or brought it back to horizontal, and how he also kept the heat in the glass just to the point that it didn't crack but he could still manipulate the tentacles. So Josh wants to get a little more curl in that first one he did. So there it is, that longer straight one. And by preheating it with the torch right now, it's going to soften it up a little bit. But he may need to go back in for a full flash of reheat to get it finally hot enough to move. So the preheating begins to soften it. When he goes back for his flash heat, that particular tentacle will pick up, will be hotter when it comes out. All the tentacles are going to pick up the same amount of heat. They're all in a glory hole. They're all getting exposed to the same amount of heat. But since the one was preheated, when it comes out, it will be hotter than the rest.
And you can see, I hope, that it's mostly orange. He's got his eye on it. He's going to watch it. And now he can put the curl into it that he wants. There's a view from the side. He can take that little nub right off with his diamond shears. I'm sorry, the straight shears. There we go. It is awesome, Joanna. It's, it's an amazing job. And it's a lot of work. It's, uh, it's a lot of experience, too, working there. Just knowing exactly how to get the heat into it, how to manipulate the glass. A couple of final tune-ups. It pays to be patient. Just get the curl in those just like he wants. If we look with him from the edge, you can see that they're all sticking down about the same amount. And that will allow it to sit evenly on a surface. Put a hook on it? No, I'm nope. gonna just torch the honey. See how he's getting just a little bit of adjustment there, and he's got these uh, fiber boards yeah, down on the bench. Yeah, this will be sit on the table as opposed to hanging, he said. So, what he can do to make sure that it will sit evenly is to put a piece of fiber board, something that's heat resistant, onto a surface and then bring the octopus down onto it and just gently press and get all the legs even, all the tentacles, so that they would touch in about the same place. Again with the heating of the punty. So that's how we'll know it will sit correctly, Cindy. See that big white board over there on the marble? After a very brief heat, he'll come back and place it on it with just enough pressure. Oh, he already got it. So they're going to drop it on there. And there it is. You see it sitting nice and even. He's heating up the Buddy Scar, so he's got at least five, I think, of those legs all even. This is just going to take care of that little scar where the buddy was. Oh, if you turn the handle the wrong way. We'll use this carbide paddle to just smooth that a little bit. Rounding the edges, see how he's making a circular motion, and away it goes into the annealer, where it will rest until tomorrow morning. Well, well let's hear it for Josh. Amazing. That was a workout. That was a workout, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, that was a workout. Yeah. That was a challenge. Uh, you can you can tell from his expression, but it was done beautifully. Yes, folks, it was. Amazing. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful job. So yeah, a couple of you had asked about the, uh, you know, whether it was going to hang or not. I had to ask too. Uh, if he'd wanted to put a hook on that, he could have rested it on that fiberboard platform. And then while it was sitting there, simply put the hook in place. Okay. So there's our octopus. Well, so uh, up next in a few moments, let's see, we're going to have a fishnet rondelle. And uh, hey, Josh, Susan gives you eight thumbs up. Okay.
We'll have a fish not, fishnet rondelle and then a fish. Would you say eight? Eight thumbs up. It's pretty yeah. good. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So uh, we've done our starfish. Did one just exactly like that. It's in the annealer right now. And our giveaway for this week is this starfish right here. And uh, so make sure you comment. Your comments get you entered in a drawing. Last week's winner was Bridget Blakemore, who won this little gold vase. Our theme today has been uh, at the beach or uh, critters and things you would find at the ocean. And so we had the starfish and we did the jellyfish. There's three of them right there. The octopus we have here. And this one was just done with a little bit different color design. And if you want some of these things, any of these things, you don't like the colors you see, let us know. We'll make them in whatever you want or whatever we have that you want. Uh, the uh, fishnet rondelle is going to mimic this pattern here, except it'll be a rondelle, which is basically just a flat plate. And then here are the fish. So we'll be coming up with that in just a moment here. And we've got lots of other vases and bowls and things we've made with all types of uh, optical impressions and whatnot. So uh, let's go over and talk to Todd and see what we're going to have a fishnet rondelle. And, uh, well, let's see if we can figure this out. We've got a blue-green right there. And we've got a mixture of some uh, aquamarine, some light blue, and some copper blue right there. So he'll be using these two colors to create the fishnet pattern. So Todd is now gathered from the furnace. Ah, that's a good one, Dave. David Hogan says it sure is interesting. It oh, sure, it sure is, is interesting, okay. yeah. All righty, so the fish net rondel. Todd right now has gathered up his glass. He's shaping it on the marver. He's not putting any color on right now. If you'll notice, he uses the angle of the iron toward the marver to change the shape of the glass. Pointed down like that, it compresses and makes a cone right on the end. He'll now trap air with his finger. He blows, and we'll see the air bubble come right out into the glass. There you go. So once he's got that, he'll reshape that a little bit on the marver, give himself a good shape for the next gather. The shape that we have for the glass, whether we're gathering or blowing, uh, any portions of it, is very important. Uh, yeah, Sharon, we are enjoying the cooler day. A couple days ago, it got, got pretty warm in here. So right now, Todd's going to let that cool off a little bit, take another swig from his <coughs> coffee. All righty. By letting that cool a little bit, he ensures when he takes this next gather that it doesn't cause the bubble to collapse. If he went too soon into the furnace, it would be possible for the heat to penetrate and cause the bubble to collapse. Now he's got the glass he needs coating the outside of that. And he'll use the cherry wood block to shape and chill the outside of it just a little bit. So now it's going to change to kind of like a Q-tip shape, if you will. So turning nice and gently and keeping the glass moving. You can see a little bit of steam rise from the block. jacks, the strap if you will, to chill that a little bit in shape and a little bit more air into the existing bubble. So we've got a variety of tools we can use to shape the glass. We can use the block if we have the one we want. Uh, that'll get us the shape we want. We can use the marver. We can use most any tool. Now he'll use the blades of the jack to change the profile of the glass a little bit. And notice how he, as he brings his hand out, curls it down toward the floor. So yes, with a straight edge, 
he's able to affect the curved surface. So that's something that takes a lot of practice. That last thing he did right there was putting a little bit of wax on the jacks. The jacks, so the only tool really that we put wax on here, we put it onto the tweezers or the shears. They won't cut or pull very well. We don't want wax on those. Again, he's letting it cool so that when he takes his next gather, it doesn't cause things to collapse. When he raises his hands like that, he's letting the glass strip back into the furnace. That way it remains usable. It just drizzled right off the end. Now he'll head over toward the marver where he has his colors laid out. And he's first going for this blue powder which again has the light blue called a mountain blue and an aquamarine color and kind of a copper ruby color. A nice fine frit and a multitude of colors in this. By changing the angle of the iron he gets the full coverage of the piece with the frit. It's as much as he wants on that, and he'll sweep that out of the way. And then he'll work on reshaping, heating. He's got to heat that to melt it all in. gets this uh, shaped up and formed like he wants. He'll be going into the optic mold in a little bit. Right now, he's going to pick up the next layer of the other color, the green. Okay, he changed the angle of the iron to get the bottom of the piece covered with the frit. At an angle like this, he covers the glass close to the blowing iron. And as he comes more toward level, he gets that mid -breed. So it's almost like he's making an arc with the blowpipe. Hands down low at first, and then coming up to the point that the hands are up high. He's got to pushing the frit out of the way, so he's done with the frit. He's going to get that all melted in and take care of the shaping he wants on this. Yeah, this is a seafood platter, Ted. It's uh, like the old Chesapeake Bay seafood house, all you care to eat. I'm kidding. People from this area probably will recognize that reference, but I think they've been out of business for a good 15 to 20 years. This reheating right now melts the frit in and then over to the marvering table. Now watch the arc of the pipe. See how it's down and now he starts coming up some and you can see the change in the shape of the glass. A little above horizontal and then even higher. Can we reuse the leftover color? Absolutely, Cindy, we do. That's why Todd kind of swept those off to the side. He's going to blow and trap air in it again and let the bubble increase in diameter in there. We'll take another pass on the barber just to smooth things out and get a nice even shape that he wants. So when, uh, when we're done with this piece, we'll simply sweep that frit back into the container that we sprinkled it out from. So uh, right now he's making sure that all the frit is out of the way so that when he comes back to the marver, he doesn't pick up any extraneous pieces. So before he goes into the optic mold, here's a little bag that the blue-green was in, and here's the jar that he keeps his other frit mix in. So he'll be putting those in there. So what he'll do now is to begin the fishnet decoration. He's 
going to get that really hot and he's going to go into that 32 point mold right there, the one that's right beside the gold one. When he does, he'll drop the glass in there, blow very, very hard, and get all those ridges put into the glass. So the glass goes right down into the mold, it's fully inserted, and it blows really hard. And when it comes out, we'll have ridges on it. There we go, beautiful. Uh, Cindy, yes, we can judge the glass somewhat by the radiant color. We can see when it's glowing. We can also tell from the motion in the glass. As it gets hot, it moves. Hot glass moves, cold glass does So right now, Todd is going to turn the iron in one direction only. He's turning clockwise. And that's going to take all those ridges and twist them. So there we go with the twist going in it. Well, I'm glad to see that somebody remembers the Chesapeake Bay Seafood House. Okay. Oh, does adding color to the glass change the radiant? Yeah, it does a bit. It, it changes the look of it, but uh, it's, still, it's still there. It's better, as Ted just said, to watch the way it's moving and the way it might respond to your touch, the way you uh, hit it with the tools. Just looking at the color really doesn't give you an accurate idea, but you can tell if you've got heat in it. So Todd now is going to shake this a little, keep the turn going, and get the diameter set up to where he can go in the mold again. Ah, Antoinette says she's always worried she's twisting the bubble. It's uh, very easy to do, but with a light touch and plenty of heat in the surface, it, you can uh, very easily control that. Also, you want to have fairly thick walls, moderately thick walls, when you do that. So what he's going to do next, he's going to heat that up, drop it in the optic bowl, and put ridges in it again. And there they are. So you see those straight ridges when he returns to the marble this time, he'll twist in the opposite direction and get a crisscross pattern. What happens if the bubble is twisted? Well, <clears throat> if you're lucky, you can get heat into it gradually and blow it out evenly. If you're not, the glass around the twists alternates thick and thin. And then you have a problem with the piece. Notice how Todd is twisting counterclockwise. Yes, Wittershins to all our Art of Fire viewers. And that will give us a beautiful crisscross pattern, which you're seeing taking shape right now. Beautiful. So sometimes when we do twist the bubble, we can actually get kind of like a corkscrew effect in it. Uh, and that's pretty hard to recover from. But again, if we have the surface of the glass extremely hot, then that's where most of the motion is in the twisting. If we have the walls moderately thick, then the bubble doesn't collapse and it doesn't twist up as much. Now he's got his twisting done. We'll take a block now and then begin to shape the glass. Let's take a larger block. Yes, Antoinette, they are both transparent colors. One is a mix of kind of blues and blue-green. The other is uh, a more... Actually, uh, that is a blue-green. Okay. Well, welcome, William. We're glad to have you. Wait, wait. Glad to have you. Okay, so there you see the patterns, and they'll become more evident as he goes along. There's a good look at the crisscross pattern. Beautiful. So there's our fishnet pattern.
Watch how you put on a cheater bit when you're working alone. So Todd lets the glass touch up, he turns away, it casts off, then he can put the cheater on the bottom. up after this. Ah, okay. Doesn't want to pull the frit off on the transfer. Oh, sorry you missed the pattern making their uh, arena. Uh, basically, it was pick up the first color on a gather, and then uh, put it into the 32-point mold, which was over here. Get the straight ridges in it, and after getting the straight ridges in it, push the entire gather clockwise to get them going at an angle. Then to get a uh, Another uh, blow in the optic mold with straight ridges, but the next time turn counterclockwise so that they get a crosshatch pattern. I'll show you real quick. This is what it's going to come out, what it comes out looking like. So we get a fishnet pattern, we call it. Actually, I would say everybody on here is a winner. They're all winners. <laughs> oh, winners. Five more. Okay, Josh is going to make up the punty for Todd. Well, Amanda, Todd's daughter, Violet, designed the, uh, the artwork on that t-shirt. And we have them for sale, as luck would have it. Okay, Josh attaches the monkey, but brings it to Todd, who places it right there on that little cheater disc he made. Again, a drop of water, the tap of the pipe, it'll come free. Very important to keep this centered, because when he begins to spin it later on, he needs the piece centered so it will come out nice and easy. Off we go. Okay, so there it is. That's what we're working with. So now what we'll do is begin to open it gradually and uh, bring it out to almost like a straight-sided bowl at one point, and then apply a lot of heat and spin it out into a disc. point where that jack line or neck line is uh, is pretty cold to be able to break like that so it takes a little while to reheat and that's why Todd is primarily heating the opening of the vessel right now. It's going to get that very hot then he's going to come back he's going to use his jacks to open it a little bit and uh, 
You can see where the heat is in it, out toward the outer third. Is he whistling the Navy hymn? <laughs> I don't think so. Somebody asked yeah. if you were whistling the Navy hymn. I think he was, right? Air Force. Oh, Air, Air Force, Force. Yeah, yes. Right. I thank you. I didn't figure it would. Haven't heard my hat. Sea no Shanty. Antoinette, it was a little bit, but that's why we fix it, okay? So part of, uh, part of this craft is knowing when something's a problem and when it's just something that's easy enough to fix, okay? It's wobbling on the putty a little bit, but he wants all that heat in there. In fact, when we think about the glass being in motion as you work it, a lot of glass blowers will tell you that the glass should always be moving and it needs enough heat to be constantly in motion. For most of us, that's a bit of a challenge. So now he's getting that open a little bit. You can see that uh, when he spins this out, it's going to be nicely distributed. Okay. Yeah, it would have been a beautiful bowl right there. It's starting to uh, spread out in the glory hole. You'll get the heat on it, turning it faster and faster. And there's that thin razor edge disc. There is your beautiful fishnet pattern on the rondelle. There'll be a little drop of water right onto the neck area. Josh is gloved up and we'll take it and place it in the annealer. So we'll wound up with a beautiful piece and uh, Antoinette, now you can see how even if it's moving a little bit off center when it's on the putty, it's entirely possible to recover. There's a beautiful view. Somebody's going to want that one. Okay, so Josh will stand that up on edge in the annealer where it will sit overnight. Okay? Way cool. Let's hear it for Todd. Let's give him some love here. Thank you, Todd. Beautiful work. Okay, let's go on back over here. And I believe we are coming up with a fish next after the fish dead. So we've done a uh, starfish, just exactly like that one. This is our giveaway for next week, another starfish. So with your comments, you get entered into our drawing. And Bridget Blakemore won the little gold vase there. And we had an octopus, a green one, slightly different than this, but uh, same general idea. And John, Todd just finished the fishnet bowl, and now he's going to make us a fish. And while we're at it here, uh, I'd like to show you a couple of pieces that were made by uh, Susan Haas, who uh, is another glass blower here, comes around a lot. She's like me, uh, a retiree here, working at it. And she does a lot of these pieces with uh, aquatic themes where she takes the sea colors and uses the baking soda to put bubbles in it. And we can do them with paperweights and beautiful vases. I believe that bowl there is one that Josh did using the same technique a few weeks ago when we were doing bubble pieces. 
So uh, hats off to Susan, and uh, they are beautiful pieces, Antoinette. So that's uh, that. Oh yeah, the jellyfish. There's the jellyfish. So any of these can be yours. Yeah, the, the octopus is really cool. The octopus looks to me like this octopus was made a little differently. This octopus yes. was cut, wasn't it? Yes. This so if cut. you guys watch the octopus, yeah, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. When Josh made this one, he actually used the shears to cut, and you can see where those edges are going up, but he still had to manipulate all of those tentacles and keep them from falling into one another. And that one happens to have the hook on it so it can hang in a window or anywhere around the house. Today's guy is a lot bigger and a lot more complex and... I think a lot nicer. Well, I think it's a lot nicer than... I do too. I love it. I. It may not be there tomorrow morning. That's right. <laughs> Susan says thanks, but retiree? Ouch. Well, <laughs> hey. If the annuity fits. <laughs> All right, so Todd's going to be making a fish for us. She's cleaning up the other uh, colors and stuff. Somebody had asked about what we do with them. And so there are fishes, samples of what we make. Oh, I know. Well, if Joyce Ferguson says it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Okay, so while Todd's getting set up there, somebody had asked about twisting the bubble. And I think... Hey Josh, is that the uh, gold thing I, I tried making, the slug of glass, the tall cylinder with the air bubble inside, is that still back here, do you know? The tall slug of glass. I was, I was doing this, working on a spiral, and it got, oh. went wacko. Yeah. This is our storage area, and uh, I was going to show you what happens when you twist a bubble badly. Well, well, here, bring them back. It's kind of funny to see the kind of stuff we find. Like this guy. This was yeah. just a prototype we were playing with. Yeah. Like you ever see stacked rocks? Yeah, right. Um, let's see. What else we got back here? Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I think it may have found its way to the recycling center. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fine. We were trying, we had a piece back here. And we we're trying to figure out what to do with it and never did but here's a lot of our stock back here pieces have been a lot of them are gathering dust but they'll they'll find a home one of these days yeah, and some of these are prototypes yeah, the so, island, trying to work out so ideas. we had an artist that wanted stones created uh, uh, like a uh, actually would have fit with a with a beach or a, a river stone and we made all these rocks and stuff so a lot of beautiful colors once we get past the dust and okay well so there's lots lots of goodies back here here's one of the early uh pictures uh decanters that uh pivots and rolls around all kinds of different things back here an early uh, uh rocks glass we got it all okay well Here's another cool one with yeah. a pattern pickup with the uh, canes. Just different ideas we try. Sometimes they develop into something. Sometimes they don't. Okay. All righty. Well, let's head on back out and see if Todd is ready to go fishing. So. One fish, two fish, red fish, orange fish? Okay. Blue fish with orange fins. Ah, okay. So so there is a blue fish involved. Too much stuff back there sharing to put on our second shelf so yeah maybe uh, 
maybe someday a yard sale. <laughs> Todd's got the glass shape. How could you tell a hand-blown piece from a manufactured piece? Um, well, usually what we'll say with uh, drinkware, that's the best or easiest example, is looking for a punting mark, a pontal mark, if you will. So when we make our vessels by hand, and we have to turn them around from the blowing iron to a punty iron, there's almost always a small scar on the bottom of the piece. Uh, not, uh, not particularly sharp or anything, but here's an example. There is the scar on the bottom of the drinking glass, okay? So we grind that off so that there's uh, all the bubbles in it. Yeah, it's one of Bruce's mugs. Huh? That's one of your mugs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice mug. Yep, another ocean theme. Uh, so anyway, if you spot that. Now, a lot of glass blowers and a lot of uh, galleries don't want that. They don't want to see the scar. But even when you take a torch and kind of melt it out a little bit, you can still see the remnants of it. But for pieces that are made in the factory, say, like the Libby factory or something like that, you probably won't see any punty marks on them at all. Because if they're made by automation, they, uh, they're blown in a mold and then they're cracked off. So Todd is gathering the color for the fish's body. So back to the business of uh, factory, or I should say automated glass, okay? Uh, when they're making it in machines, okay? So what we could do if we had uh, molds of the right shape and size, we could actually form the vessel, okay? And leave the top of it, the neck, much longer than it needs to be. And then do what's called cracking off which means scarring the glass with a diamond blade and then putting it on a turntable and applying heat. And when you do that, the top of the glass pops off. Uh, is that your blue mix, Todd? Yeah. So it's the same blue mix he had uh, with the fishnet bowl. Okay? So just going to use that for the body of the fish. So once the top of a popped-off vessel is off, it has a sharp edge and it needs to be heated so that it doesn't cut anybody. And one of the telltale marks of a factory made drinking glass or goblet would be a bead at the top of the glass. If it looks like the rim is thickened just a little bit, just like there's a small ring around the top. And if you see that, you can bet that the piece was cracked off not puntied up and open. Most, I would say 99% of the time. Todd's going to go into the optic mold and blow real hard. Yep, kind of a small thin mold. Get the ridges in it and then it'll work on blowing this out, elongating it and getting the body of the fish shape. Yeah, you would think with a baby thin mold we'd be making a lot of fish or sharks or something. If you see any of the goblets that we make, you'll always see a punting mark on the foot. If you watch one that's made in a Libby factory, you'll never see a punty mark on the bottom of the foot. The foot and the stem are finished when the glass is put away and then the top is cut off. Another interesting thing, you can see all this stuff on the YouTube, but another interesting thing about the factory made glass is you wonder how they get them all to the exact same size. But if you line them up side by side a lot of times, you'll see that some of them have a slightly longer or shorter stem. Because what your eye catches is the distance from the foot to the lip. Okay? So if you set the height of cutting the lip at exactly the same thing, if you pull the stem a little bit too long, your cup is still the same size. There, that little bit of spinning elongated the bubble, and this is going to give the fish its kind of oval shape. So 
So in a few moments, so if uh, the inflating, he'll also be going over the marver, using the blow hose just basically to trap air, not really blow hard, but this will be to flatten it. If he didn't have something to keep the air from squeezing out, it would collapse and touch up in the middle. So by blowing very gently, or just keeping the air in it, and notice that he's got a slight angle down toward the tip. So there you go. So all you glass blowers out there, that's how you control it. So by keeping the air, if he hadn't had that blow hose on and he didn't cover the end of the pipe with his finger, the air would have squeezed out. It would have squeezed out of the bubble of glass, all the way out the pipe, and we'd be starting over. Now he's going to place an eye on one side. And what he'll do now is pick up the next one. And now very gently put it into the heat. And that'll help it melt in. So he didn't need to use the torch. You saw Josh use the torch when he put the eye on the uh, octopus earlier? Well, Todd just went into the glory hole with the eye up, and now he just presses it in place a little bit. The glass is warm enough to... Yeah, Antoinette, uh, it'd be great to flatten uh, ornaments. We do that all the time. It's just basically a flattened ornament. Looks like, uh, almost like a flask, but without an opening in the top. So now he's going to go back and get that Get the placement of the eye opposite the other one. And now just a quick reheat, get the heat into the eye there so that it adheres. Once he gets those in place, he's ready to roll. By tapping on the eye, just pressing it gently, it goes right into the body. It can grab his tooth and pull the tail out a little bit. Take another glass. There we go. We'll come back over here because they're going to be delivering bits in just a moment. Josh is going to be bringing the glass for the fins and all the, the tail pieces and everything. And Todd right now is getting the body set up. So he's pulling the tail and giving us a nice elongation. Now his fish is forming up. It's contact and breaks it down and then a cut. Now by slicing with the shears. Old dorsal thin thing. Now a quick reheat. And we'll get some more. Now again, just like working with the octopus, this thing is hot, so it's constantly moving. So you just adjust to that. Now this is a little bit smaller piece of glass. We're going to put this one right at the front on one side and then adjacent to it. And we'll have a couple of fins right there. A little flattening to give it a little bit of breadth. Tommy Dorsal. Yeah, I like that, David. So by using the shears, you can get a little more heat in it right now. You can use the shears for a little bit of separation between the pieces of the fin. Over there we got the next one being prep. A few 
cuts. And not so much worrying about cutting the glass. Yes, or Jimmy Dorsey, that's right. So the fish okay. will be able to rest on those two. Now he's angling it up so that when he puts on the piece for the tail, it's not going to fall quite as far toward the floor. It doesn't have as far to fall. A quick clip, and then flattening again with the serrated tongs. That puts lines in it that direction, and then this Tip off a little bit of it and then make a few more cuts and pulls. A little angle to the tail there. And more, actually kind of creating impression, not so much uh, cutting through. Just little grooves in the glass. Yes, Barbara, they're both very skilled and all of these things take a lot of skill because the glass is constantly moving while you're doing it. So just being a sculptor is not quite enough unless your sculpture is moving on you constantly. Okay, so we'll get it line up. time for a book. This is going to be a fish that will hang. So now this is going to be really interesting here in a couple of moments. You can see Josh is over here picking up some of the orange glass. This is going to be the mouth. Now we've got to break the piece off of the blowing iron, obviously to put it away. Also to have a mouth on it, but when we break it free, it's going to have the point where the jack line was cut. And that's going to be a bit of a sharp edge, okay? And plus it would just be plain old green glass. So by using these, uh, this jack handle that's got some insulated material, you'll be able to break it free and hold it and then point it up and Josh will deliver the glass for the mouth to it. So we'll go over here to get a view. He's going to break it free. He's holding it in the insulated material. Josh delivers the glass puts it onto the mouth and flips it off. Then he'll use his tweezers to put in a line to create the lip. Along with a glove, and Josh's glove up, he gives it off to him. Marvelous! Let's hear it for Todd. Way to go! Very nice! Beautiful fish! Okay! What a day at the beach! Yeah! All righty. Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you've been making comments, uh, yeah, fish lips. That's right, Barbara Belzer. Okay. So uh, you've seen uh, a lot of our beach wear or our beach animals, creatures, critters, whatever. And we got some great suggestions from you guys. So uh, maybe we will try to put some of that into a future show. So uh, have a great week. And from the Art of Fire, thanks for joining us.